Other yellow hat guy here, back with another video. And this is going to be an interesting video. I haven't done one of these before, so I'm excited to make it. I wasn't sure how I just wanted to make it either. I'm in the game room and it's a lot different, so if you were one of the OG subscribers that watched back in the day, you can see the game room setup is much, much different from, from how it was before. I'm sitting in the uh, back of it where, you know, well not the back, maybe the front. It's a little weird for me. I'm not sitting on my couch to game. I just wanted to also show you a little bit of the game room. Maybe we'll do a tour sometime later, but I digress. This video was brought to you largely in part due to a fellow subscriber, a fellow fan, a fellow creator who put a challenge out at the end of her video saying, hey, this is open to anybody who, you know, feels like they want to answer this challenge. She was challenged by a group of, uh, or a couple of people to name her sexy or most attractive consoles. I'm talking about JLove81. Y'all go shout her out, check out her channel. If you were here because she shouted me out, thank you for watching. Hopefully you stick around. Let me know what you're looking for. A lot of us are retro gamers, older folks who, you know, just for whatever reason, we still love the old days, the old games that we used to play and may or may not have time for anymore, but uh, it makes us somewhat collectors. I don't look at myself as a collector, but over time, that's what's happened. So rambling aside, let's actually get into it. Now, two of these consoles I'm not going to show because that required me to move some stuff around. I did move three out of them. I'm going to hit you with five of them just like she did. And uh, I'm going to mix it up just a little bit. I'm going to tweak it a little bit. Reason being is everyone's putting out uh, what they think is the best console or their top five. I'm going to put out my top five that I actually own. And the reasons are going to be not just because I find the console most attractive, but the actual one that I own, whether it's tweaked a little or modified or has a different skin or shell, that might have more weight, or I won't say might, it will have more weight in my opinions. So I don't necessarily want you thinking these are the best consoles or my favorite uh, to play. They're just my favorite just by design and uh, how I like looking at them, right? For example, you've got PS5, it's got that weird shape, it looks like a router. And then you've got Xbox, their console looks like, you know, a little tower, mini tower. Now, it's easy to look at that off gate and say it's going to be ridiculous, but wait till it's in your hands. Maybe your opinion changes, right? A lot of us were like that with the GameCube. GameCube would be an honorable mention, it's not on my list. So let's actually start. And I'm not sure how I want to put this in any particular order, but we've got to start somewhere. So what I did dig out, number one is going to be the NES. Yeah, mine's dusty and dirty. A lot of my consoles are. Uh, I don't really turn this bad boy on anymore, largely in part because I've got other consoles that also play NES games. You know, you've got the Wii, Wii U, who all had, you know, NES virtual consoles and things like that emulators, you know the whole deal. Why hook this bad boy up when you could play those games that for, are for this and other things on other consoles? You've got the Retro, Retro 5, I'm looking at an FC Twin over here, all of those capable of doing that so this doesn't get the love that it needed. But like JLo said in hers, this was set up like a VCR. You never really noticed the curves and how it's indented just to fit in your entertainment system you know, like a VCR, that's what they were going for. I know you can't see Rob up here in this shot, but you know, history lesson here is they were trying to sell that to get you to get this. They didn't think they could sell this based off of how the market was in that time. But moving on, that's gonna be number five for me. Now, uh, while the NES was cool, you had the Genesis, which boasted 16-bit graphics and blast processing and all that. You had two different versions of it too. You had the uh, Model 2, which I grew up with, which I thought was kind of cool looking. And I may actually, I think I had it, but I sold it to Rakama Tech 
my buddy Alpha. Shout out for Common Tech. Y'all check him out too if you're in tech videos. He's got my Model 2. I ended up getting a Model 1. Why? Not because I found either of those to make this list. It does and it doesn't make the list. How? Sega CD. Now, it could connect one of two ways with this bracket that you see, excuse me, on this side, or if you had the Model 2, it was on the side, which is very wide. This, although it's uh, pretty heavy, well, it's not super heavy, but for a console, it could be. There's a lot of hookups you gotta have going on here. But this was cool, this was ahead of its time. This was pricey. I could not afford this thing as a kid. See, here it is right here where you would slide this out to connect your uh, Model 2. But this was just sexy all around to be able to... I, I believe you could play the Genesis games still and the Sega CD games. You just choose which one you wanted to go with. Uh, just unplug this one if you just wanted to use that one. I think that's how it worked. I can't really remember. But again, other ways for me to play Sega CD so it doesn't get the love that it... Uh, should get or would have gotten there it is that's my number four so going from my number four here's one of those I'm not gonna dig out but most of you know the PS3 not the fat model which I have everybody loves the fat model because why backwards compatibility a bigger hard drive it had four USB ports if you got the OG one that uh, had Metal Gear Solid I can't remember which Metal Gear Solid it was I want to say it was maybe three or four, it might have been four. Either way, uh, that was on there. It could have been five too. I really think it was four though. <laughs> Anywho, that one was the one that a lot of people had and while it was cool looking, it had a really obnoxious noise to it because the fan would be loud and you know, it was just the first of its kind. I think they may have rushed it. Uh, you know, compete with Microsoft, even though, you know, Microsoft had a head start. They were trying to hurry up and get it out there to try to win that console generation. But I say that to say this. The revision of that, nice and sleek. The revision, by the revision, I mean PS3 Slim. Yes, the Slim. I really like that. It's very sleek. And what's the word they used? Uh, when, like, not aerodynamic, but you know, where it's just sleek and, you know, can navigate through a wind, a vehicle, or somebody on a bike with the helmet smooth. Uh, I can't think of the word, it escapes me right now, but it's got that sleek look to it. It's sexy, it's attractive, it looks modern still to this day. It, it, you can tell that, hey, this is somewhat futuristic. It, it still looks like it could have been put out in the last, you know, uh, 10 years because, well, Maybe it's still on that cutoff, but you get where I'm going with it. It doesn't look dated like some of the other consoles. When you look at a PS3, you could easily clean that up. You're not having to oxidize it or use some kind of uh, nail polish remover like you are on the NES and the next console I'm going to name. The next console is also a revision. So here is my number three, and this is the... SNES Mini. No. SNES Junior. Junior here has got the uh, wireless plugs in here for the controllers. I always wanted to have a wireless controller for these, but uh, what it makes up for in simple design, it uh, allow has the top view there like the you know genesis or not the genesis genesis also had that but i'm just rambling now but i'm leaving it in <laughs> it's got the uh slot like this but it's got the reset here which is simple instead of the two purple buttons here big purple buttons it's just simple here power it, it's just very basic i think they redesigned some of the sound chips and all that too in there but there it is it's got the multi out and the adapter very light console I've always wanted this. I grew up with the Genesis. I never got the Super Nintendo as a child. Later on, towards the Virtual Boy coming out and the N64, they did this model. It was a lot cheaper. I could have had it anytime I went looking for it. For whatever reason, this was more expensive than the OG Super NES. And then 
somehow that switched. I think the other one's more expensive. But these are a lot harder to find. So there you go. So that leaves us to just two more. Number two is also going to be a PlayStation product. And that's going to be this guy right here. PS1, not to be confused with the other PSX. This is PS1. What's the difference? It's got this screen here. So this is just a PlayStation really, but you can take this on the go. A lot of times before people had DVD players in their car and things like that, you wanted to play some kind of video games, you were bringing something like this with you. Yeah, yeah, I know, handheld, but if you were trying to do away with that and actually play some RPGs and Crash Bandicoot, you got this thing. Uh, I found this on the internet through somebody who had a plethora of them. She sold me this pretty cheap. What I love is that the AVN is on the back so that you can hook this up to a TV, uh, but you can also plug headphones in here when you want to listen to it portably. It's got its own charger and a multi-in. I mean, this, this was just, it just gave you the best of both worlds. Why keep your regular PlayStation around when you had this? Now, true, the PlayStation had all kinds of little serial ports and things like that, Game Shark playability that this would not allow you to do, but this was, I just like smaller consoles, I really do. Less is more. If I wanna just go to somebody's house and they don't have anything to play with, here this is, you know. So before we get to the number one, I am going to give my honorable mentions. Now, I did say one earlier that would be one, but uh, we talk small systems. Attractive, simple is more for me. This might not be popular, but I like the Ouya. The Ouya, uh, very simple in design, but it's a powerhouse. I think that's what kept me going, the controller. That aside, the rest of the console itself is pretty uh, neat. Just this simple cube. No, it's not super sexy or anything like that, but the simplicity of it, I really like that. So I don't think it's better than any of these other consoles that I named and what it can do for you. But if I were to have a, well, I guess a second honorable mention, that would be it. None of the handhelds quite made it, but I would also add the Game Gear. And I'm not gonna reach over here and get it, but the Game Gear was ahead of its time where you only had the Game Boy and you know the different versions of it that would soon follow. None of those had color. You're right, the Game Boy Color eventually came out, but Game Gear, its downside was the software wasn't quite there and it used too many batteries. But it was sleek, it was sexy, it looked like a portable TV. That's the design they were going for. Where like the NES kind of had that VCR type vibe. Game Gear had a portable TV type vibe to it. And I believe they had a TV tuner add-on for it so that you could watch, you know, basic channels over it. Awesome. So uh, those would be the systems right there that would get an honorable mention for me. Again, not necessarily I had the most fun with or played the most, but just in like, if I were just to look at them, I'd be like, yo, I've got to have that in my collection. Game Gear was an honorable mention. So what's number one? Number one is gonna be a system I did not care for. Spent a lot of time in the modding, hacking scene, messing with this thing, but uh, the OG Xbox, yes, that's my number one. And you can see in this picture I got up here, I've got a shell for it that's just crystal clear. I got LED lights going on in it. It just, it was just so nice to look at. The features, you know, just out the box, the, you know, native version of it without any of the add-ons that I did to it. You play CDs and DVDs. It had a remote control dongle with it. I mean, an Ethernet port on the back. Yes, PS2 had that, but you didn't really use that until Xbox came out. Playing LAN parties was just a PC thing, but then their OG Xbox came out. Then you add in Kodi and all that. Now I'm talking specifically software, but the hardware mods that I was able to do this, customizing it made it more attractive to me. It made it to where even after I was able to play, you know, uh, 
the Wii and Wii U and you know PS3 that I would still turn on the OG Xbox and it could still output 720p you know uh, it was just an all-around nice system to look at nice system to have it had four ports on the front of it kind of like the GameCube not kind of just like the GameCube did uh, maybe the software wasn't right like it needed to be but that has a whole nother argument to go along with it but let me know what you guys think what are your favorite consoles that you find attractive uh, let me know in the comments I'm going to challenge Trey Pfeiffer T5 Tech I'm going to challenge you I'm going to challenge Rakama Tech I challenge you to do a response video to this I also I, I would like to challenge a couple more of you but you may not see the video but if you do, put a response in the comments like I did to J-Love and let me know what your thoughts are. That said, I appreciate you guys, each and every one of you. Shout out to all my Patreons. Shout out to new and old subscribers. We're going to keep this thing going. Like she said in her video, promote positivity. So that's what we're doing. Y'all stay safe, stay blessed. I'm going to see you in the next one. Captain Sensation!